Distilling Chemistry, Getting to the Heart of Partnering. If I tell you tango, you probably have an idea of what you're about to see, a man and a woman in some kind of passionate battle. Let me invite you to put those ideas aside for a moment and dive into our research. Argentine tango is an improvisational social dance form organized by a radical lead and follow relationship. Any step is a tango step as long as it can be led and followed. Even the smallest shift of weight is a step. In tango there are no set counts, no set patterns to hang on to. There is only weight, direction, intensity and timing to be communicated. Tango offers an opportunity to study interdependence because its premises provide both an openness to creativity and a constriction that allows for instant feedback on whether the partners are being responsive to each other or not. This experience has been essential in my formation as a dancer and as a person. But how can I make this experience universal? How many other ways can I organize lead and follow improvisations so it provides instant feedback on connection? Generally, what has been borrowed from tango is the aesthetics, but not the grammar. By grammar, I mean the way in which the co-creation is dictated by the dynamic interplay of lead and follow. That's what I'm interested in. Now, do the roles have inherent power imbalance, or is the imbalance extrinsic to the roles? The dance can be contentious or collaborative. The key to access a collaborative dynamic is in understanding following. The follower is the main mover. The leader dances vicariously through her motion. The leader plans what we do. The follower defines how we do it. But to lead well, you need to tune into the possibilities of the how, and to follow well, you need to execute the what. In connecting to a partner, Attentiveness and receptivity are mutual. But how to distill that level of attentiveness so it can be used by other dance forms without relying on the style of tango? With my team, formed by a ballet dancer, two tango dancers and a theater director, we worked on taking away the embrace and playing with some rules that recreate lead and follow interdependence. We worked on developing smart legs that can distinguish through contact messages such as accompanying, taking, offering, displacing, stopping, supporting, and pushing. We carried that knowledge from four legs to six legs. We worked on communicating lead and follow from the upper body of the leader to the lower body of the follower through space. We did studies of communicating who is the center by developing a clear way to distinguish concave versus convex motion while maintaining distance. When your torso moves in a convex fashion, you're asking your partner to go around your axis. When your torso moves in a concave manner, you are indicating to your partner that he or she is being the center. We began building a common vocabulary, but that's when we needed to recalibrate. The goal was to question what is at the heart of connection, not to create a tight dance. So we look for new challenges. 
We look for a recipe that had the right amount of predictable and unpredictable. We look for a way to keep each other alert, but not lost. Thanks to our theater director, we took several strategies from theater that promote being present and responsive. That's one of them. That's one of them. So it's like when we start to dance, what is it about? Um, and it's just searching those. So when I say deeper for this next one, it really just means personalizing. Where am I in this moment? We worked on trios and the feeling of being left out, paired with the ability to take yourself out as well. We also worked with personalization in which one person from outside asks a question. One of the movers answers it while continuing the improvisation with the other dancer. The speaking and the listening of the answers informs the dance. The process was generative and helped us embody some answers. The roles of lead and follow don't have an intrinsic power imbalance. The imbalance comes from not valuing followership qualities contained in both roles. Followership is key to connection. Connection can be taught because it's based on a curiosity and an investment on each other, on a personal work to become trustworthy and the ability to trust. To foster connection, we developed improvisational structures that provide immediate feedback on whether the dancers are being receptive or not. These structures can be enjoyed regardless of the dance style. My hope is that this work can be applied to different dance forms and aid in making choreography that focuses on connection. I aim at building a path for dramatic material that is truthful to the performance experience. <laughs> <laughs>